Uh, Enrico Monticelli is a PhD student at the State University of Milan. His research project is mostly focused on the French reception of American pragmatism in the 20th century. And his talk will be on transcendence and concreteness, Gene Wall's reception of Whitehead's philosophy of experience. Thank you very much. Um, it's very nice seeing you, everyone here. And luckily, my talk will nicely intersect with the ones that have preceded me. So now I'll share my screen. So I hope that everyone will see my slides. So yes, my talk will be about transcendence and, transcendence and concreteness, and especially about Jean Val's reception of Whitehead's philosophy of experience. So the aims of my talk are basically three. First and foremost is to reactualize, in a sense, Jean Val's reading of Whitehead. Jean Val has been a key figure of the French debate in the past century. He has been the master, for example, of Gilles Deleuze or uh, Emmanuel Levinas, but he has been forgotten as sort of a thinker on, on its own. It has always been remembered as sort of um, the one who kick-started certain philosophical movements or certain philosophical ideas, but he has not been, I think, recognized enough as a thinker on his own terms. And especially he has not been recognized as an original reader of Whitehead. Secondly, I'd like to sketch what I'd call the debate on concreteness. Concreteness has been a hot topic in the French debate of the past century, especially in among the so-called post-structuralist and the existentialist. Here, of course, I will not give you a thorough account of the French debate, and I will not go into it that much. But what I'd like to do on a more um, humble, it's, it's something more humble, I think, is to give an account of concreteness through Valian lenses and through Whiteheadian lenses, sort of putting them in a tight confrontation, uh, especially following the way Jean Val read Whitehead, and give new life sort of to this debate, see what this debate could do for us rather than what it has been in the past century. And lastly, I would like to confront the problem and the meaning of what I'd like to call the Whiteheadian posterity. Uh, all of those schools of thought that were influenced by Whitehead, but were in some sense forgotten by the larger Whiteheadian scholarship. I'd like to spotlight those who read Whitehead, those who commented Whitehead, but were not remembered as Whiteheadian readers, so to speak, as uh, gateways to Whitehead, for example, for uh, European culture or, or for French culture at large. So I'd like to confront the, the way in which Whitehead was read and re received, in a sense, and see whether this posterity can be reactualized and could work for us in a way. So the inspiration for my talk is actually twofold, and in, and in both instances, it comes from Whitehead in, himself. There's this passage in The Function of, on, of Reason in which he's talking about uh, aesthetic contemplation, so to speak, and appetition. The argument is fairly simple. And of course, here I'll give a sort of uh, cut up version of it without the, much of the context, but sort of to give what I thought was my inspiration and, and, and the thing that spurred me forward to present this, this talk. And in, in this precise, uh, precise um, quote, Whitehead uh, sim seems to be talking about some sort of transcendence when it comes to aesthetic satisfaction. Uh, it seems to imply that aesthetic satisfaction cannot be described be merely by the physical order of this world. So it kind of gave me uh, a hint uh, to, to, to maybe work more on this idea of transcendence and see whether in the Whiteadian scholarship it could have some, some place or some um, well, well, not in the Whiteheadian scholarship, but in the precise posterity that interests me, it could have some leeway. It could be a sort of doorway to better understand why Jean Val read him that way 
and what sort of things we could do with Jean Val's reading. So it was not so much a conceptual sort of intake, but more of an image. And even further, it kind of spurred me the spurred me forward the the reading of the Harvard lecture when in a few notes there's um uh there's this um they they talk about this category of beyondness which to me sounded extremely fascinating and interesting because in this quotes in particular it was uh, explicitly referred to as a sort of direct connection between uh, Whitehead and dialectics, which, as we will see, was one of the main interests for Jean Val. Therefore, the category of beyondness to me was a direct bridge to sort of justify a necessary rereading of what Jean Val had to say about Whitehead. This concept, of course, within the wider uh, Whitehead uh, work are very much again cut up. They're not. I'm, I'm not giving it with the with the right amount of context for sure. But what interests me is the way in which they function when put in into a sort of confrontation with Jean Val. So this was my general inspiration. So now to the sort of meat of my talk. Uh, I would I'd like to to call this sort of encounter between Jean Val and Whitehead as a sort of felicitous perversion of Whitehead and the Whitehead's work made by Jean Val. The two main works in which Jean Val worked on Whitehead were his doctoral dissertation on American pluralism, and more importantly the the book still not translated in English, I believe, called Towards the Concrete. Towards the Concrete was a work of basically history of ideas in which Jean Val wanted to give an account of the idea of the concrete through three thinkers mainly. And these three thinkers were William James, Gabriel Marcel, and, Jean, and, and, um, and Whitehead. And within that work, Whitehead served as a sort of um, ontological binding agent between William James presented as a pure pluralist, so as a sort of uh, existentialist, so to speak, without going too much into details, and Gabriel Marcel presented more as a theological thinker, so a thinker, for example, of theology after the death of God, which was one of the main tops topics that interested Jean Val. Whitehead, in here, worked as the ontologist, so to speak, the one that was to present the sort of thinking of ontological thinking Jean, Jean Val wanted to, to present. And I believe that his intervention could be mainly divided in four main propositions. Through Whitehead, Jean Val wanted to propose what he'd call, through Bergson, a superior empiricism, which could be um, defined in less flowery terms as uh, an empiricism that would not have the drawbacks that uh, sort of afflicted Hume's empiricism, but that was corrected through a more uh, thorough and precise thinking of uh, reality and matter. Secondly, through Whitehead, uh, Val wanted to present what I'd like to call a new ontology of immediacy, uh, a new thinking of what through sellers we could call the given. And here I'll give in further details uh, uh, soon. Second, thirdly, there was what I'd like to, what I've called a, a complete displacement of rationalism. Jean Val was in some sense considered an irrationalist or more precisely, he had a sort of bone to pick with the logicians and a sort of uh, more um, phenomenological school of thought that was dominating in France back then that wanted to render philosophy into a precise science. Therefore, through Whitehead, he wanted to attack, in some sense, uh, a, a very loose, uh, a very loose and broad school that we could call rationalism. Lastly, he wanted to create a philosophy of imminent transcendence, but on that I will give more details soon, so I will not go into it much. So 
the general project that Jean Val brought forth could be summarized in what he says in the very beginning of Towards the Concrete, in this quote, in which he's sort of trying to show what is the general sort of common thread between the three thinkers he decided to analyze, James, Whitehead, and Marcel. And what he finds as a sort of common ground between this very diverse thinker is a new thinking of what he calls the, the mine, the here, and the now. So what these three thinkers had in common, according to Jean Val, is that they sort of let us think about what is closer to us, what is particular, what is not universal, our very embodied and immediate experience in more thorough terms. And here we also have a sort of specification of what he meant by rationalism. And what I mean when I say a complete displacement of rationalism, what he thought is that these three thinkers were a sort of open and thorough response to Hegelianism or Hegel in a, in a more general sense. Therefore, he thought that these three thinkers, Whitehead as the ontologist in all of this, were anti-dialectical thinkers, thinkers of the anti-dialectical. And that's why I sort of brought up the beyondness category in the beginning and said that that was my inspiration. Because in the notes, what we find is actually some closest closeness between Whitehead and Hegel. So of course, here we see the, the sort of the beginning of the felicitous perversion. Here we see how Jean Val's reading of Whitehead is a philosophy on its own, a sort of posterity that branches out out of Whitehead and becomes its own thing. So secondly, to sort of give a full roadmap of what Towards the Concrete is like, I think that I, I'd like to give a, a, a more thorough definition of the concrete. And here, I think that the best way to describe it is that the concrete, according to Jean Val, is absolutely the opposite of the so-called myth of the given. If with the myth of the given, we sort of have a critique of the given as a category of the most obvious, which we should sort of undermine. Here, Jean Val says that the concrete, and in a sense, the immediate, is precisely what is beyond our rational inquiry, so to speak, our philosophical inquiry, more precisely, or at least it is the furthest thing for philosophy. It is reality in its simplest and more bare bones sort of, um, sort of form. Uh, he here sort of uh, gives uh, an example of someone who got close that paradoxically enough was the young Hegel, uh, who is the object of this critique, but he was also a very thorough and, and, and interested re reader of Hegel. And the young Hegel got close when it came to sentiments, because it was a sort of anti-dialectical Hegel, so to speak, the, the the young Hegel, at least according to Jean Val, of course. Uh, but the, the ones that get very close to uh, an actual sort of grasping of the immediate are the poets. Further down the line, before starting to talk about uh, Whitehead, he mentions another thinker that he claims to be one of his main inspiration as someone, as a thinker of the concrete, and it's the the, philo the theologian Karl Barth, and Karl Barth, according to him, was a, a, a realist, a sort of this thinker of the limits of philosophy, uh, because precisely he was a proponent of this sort of agnostic mysticism, he says. Therefore, uh, what he claims to be the concrete is that thing which presides thought, that is before thought, and that it's sort of the ending point, the thing that thought cannot grasp unless through this sort of destitution. So now, of course, the question is, what does Whitehead has to do with any of this? And I think that the map that sort of, the sort of image that Jean Val creates of, of Whitehead is actually quite uh, bare bone in a sense, but it's interesting because it sort of isolates some aspects of Whitehead and it gives it gives it a sort of uh, nobility on his own. Its first idea is that 
um, Whitehead is a thinker of concreteness precisely because he's a thinker, of, he's a sort of realist. Therefore, his ontology starts from this sort of uh, mutual prehension between reality and humanity and in the sort of um, sort of preceding ontological quality of matter and reality. Therefore, sort of back paddling, sort of piggybacking off the, the slide before, what I believe that his its main ontological insights is that for Jean Val, Whitehead is a realist in the sense that for him, uh, sort of philosophy comes after the sort of unfolding of, of reality. And this is sort of the, the grasping, the, the, the entry point for Jean Val's analysis of Whitehead. Secondly, he says that what is most important about uh, Whitehead is what he calls his philosophy of nature. His philosophy of nature is, in a, in a sense, again, a sort of, um, a sort of uh, a affirmation of realism. What he means by philosophy of nature is actually quite far, I believe, from what Whitehead means. But he takes from Whitehead the idea that nature is sort of a experimental concept. There's something to be observed and that does not enter fully in our um, in our conceptual map. Therefore, there's always this sort of exteriority to nature itself. And what Val seems to be very interested in uh, with, uh, with Whitehead is this sort of exteriority of nature as a concept that leads to observation and not to a sort of, cer a sort of certainty. Therefore, again, what Jean Val seems to defend is the idea that nature is uh, another way to say realism, this sort of staunch uh, anti-philosophical, in a sense, realism. But of course, since my talk was about transcendence, there is the question of where's transcendence in all of this. And you I think that, that okay, uh, to give the sort of brief position, I think that what he meant by transcendence was again this uh, defense of external external relations here he does a very bold uh, move in saying that according to him whitehead ontology is pretty much identical to uh, russell's plural pluralism in this idea that relation are independence independent of their terms and their terms are independent of their relations. Therefore, there's always this sort of idea that whatever is real and whatever is matter is outside our grasp. Therefore, the concrete is the sort of end point of philosophy or radical start point. And to end, and this is interesting, given the quote we were saying before, uh, Jean Valt sort of concludes his um, talk, uh, his, his, his presentation of Whitehead sort of giving uh, to me one of the most interesting and evocative um, idea of transcendence through Whitehead, that is the idea that Whitehead ontology ends up being mostly identical to Wordsworth or Shelley's romanticism in his way of giving a sense of passive, the, pre the passive presence of reality, it's sort of that outsideness, that beyondness, that gives us um, that he's defending against Hegelianism and rationalism. But of course, I think that this is up for grabs in a sense, because if there is something that I would like to oppose to Jean Val's reading of Whitehead is Whitehead himself. In that quote from The Function of Reason that sort of spurred my interest, there's uh, this defense in a sense of some form of rationalism to be defended, to be defended, which um, certainly uh, does not sit well with the way Val read Whitehead. Therefore, he says that reason is vacillating, vague and dim, sort of working very closely to this sort of anti-rationalism that why that Val uh, proposed as the ontological cipher to Whitehead's work, but he also claimed that it is there. Therefore, that reason cannot be completely displaced as Val would have liked. So thank you very much. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Let's all give uh, Professor Mon is it Monticelli? Yep. Excellent. Thank you for that great paper. Congratulations. Let's uh, start with uh, Christian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, maybe <laughs> you know, you know. Sorry. Maybe you know in which direction I will go, but uh, I think that maybe in the um, quote uh, you show you have uh, shown earlier, uh, Valle is uh, mistaking two things uh, regarding the exteriority of relations, which are uh, the independence of terms from relations and vice versa, which is Russell's thesis, and uh, the irreducibility of uh, um, of terms to relations and vice versa, which is actually what White had holds. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why he often talks about um, uh, the externality of relations uh, um, and not only about their, um, their interiority. Also, I wanted to ask you if, uh, um, well, sometimes uh, uh, Jean Val, as uh, you showed, um, talks about the concreteness in terms of the exteriority of relations as the possibility of considering the here and, and, uh, and now and so on. Um, there is instead, a, it seems to me, an almost opposite conception of concreteness in what it is, that which is not yet abstracted from relations. For instance, Charles Hart shown as uh, very much highlighted this aspect. So do you think, and, and this is, I think, the Hegelian view too. So I think, do you think uh, Valis does uh, um, criticizing the old conception of uh, concreteness and proposing a new one or raise some way of uh, bringing the, the two together? Thank you, thank you, Christian. Uh, of course, uh, I mean we we've talked over this quite a bit already, but yeah, uh, on on your second one, which I think it's the the easiest to to answer to, uh, which is also sort of a, 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 an answer to to the first one. So it's it's going to be all lumped up together. Then we can try to figure out what's what. Uh, I believe that. Um, Jean Val is not completely mistaken, but as I said, there's uh, there's this uh, willful perversion in a sense, because there's um, if if you analyze what he says about uh, Whitehead in Towards the Concrete, he also have has a very sort of funny way of talking about speculative philosophy. For example, he seems to sort of be afraid that using the term speculative will lump Whitehead in with the Hegelians, which it's probably a move that would be warranted in some ways and in some regards, but which he historically did not want to, to do. What I believe is that he's not creating a new concept of concreteness, so to speak. What he's doing is... Um, he's radicalizing Russell's because if you sort of look for a, a sort of common thread in pluralism in, in Jean Val philosophy, the name that recurs more and more, like more often than, than any other is, is Russell more than James and more than Whitehead's. And I think that what he's doing is sort of lumping Whitehead together with Russell uh, as a sort of, guilty by affiliation sort of reasoning in a, in a sense and and he's trying to uh give a, a very maximalist sort of definition of external relations so i'm not sure it's it's, it's very much of a convincing answer uh, to you but but i actually believe that um and 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 and, and probably the strongest point is that when he's talking about Hegel, the young Hegel, if you go and look for the references to the Anglo-American tradition in the, the, the book about unhappy consciousness, the person he quotes aside from William James is Bertrand Russell. And he does that in the same line. So yes, it's not new. It's just a Russellian, but by, by other means, that ended up interested in, in, in Whitehead's ontology, I think. 
Sounds like there's some good conversations going on in Northern Italy. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous of uh, what's going on in and around Milan. So who else would like to join in on this uh, conversation? Feel free to uh, use the reactions down there to raise your hand. And uh, remember, you can also pose a question in the chat if you'd prefer to do that. Ruth, please. Oops, I lost you. Ruth, did you want to? I think you're muted. Thank you, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. And thank you, Enrico, for your um, talk. And I, I really think you're bringing up a very important point, um, especially as it pertains to kind of the interesting historical break that happens in, uh, in analytic philosophy and, and, you know, continental and in the US, that's, a, that's problematic. I think what you're bringing up is really um, under, uh, it's not focused on enough uh, because really um, these two discourses, even though they're very intertwined, took a really particular direction due to Russell in the US. And whereas Whitehead and some of these other thinkers that you're highlighting here um, ha have become more elusive and less mm -hmm. um, part of the larger like body of um, the conversation even. So I, I really appreciate what you're what you're doing here, what you're bringing up. And I, um, I guess I'm curious to, to know uh, also how you view um, Whitehead and Russell in that in that regard. Um, as well. And um, Jean Bola is a really wonderful area to, to kind of dig into that, those questions. So thank you again. And, and um, interesting to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I believe that there is, um, of course, I'm, I'm not much of a Whiteheadian nor a, a Russellian, so to speak. But um, it's interesting to read them uh, through the lenses of the the way they were read, because there's probably an, another interesting author that historically could give uh, a lot of uh, insights in the way this discourse was shaped, at, at least here in Europe, that is Gilles Deleuze. And the, the interesting thing is, is that they both read both Whitehead and Russell, but they had starkly different views on them especially after a certain, a, a certain break, so to speak, in the, I, I think, late, late 70s and early 80s, where if for Jean Val were basically both simply ontologists, maybe a little alien in their language or in the way they proposed certain topics, they were still sort of buddies in a, in a very uh, simple, in a, in a very simple way to put it. Uh, but when it comes through to uh, Deleuze, he has extremely glowing terms for Whitehead. He's for him, he's the epitome of the philosopher of of creation. But when he was interviewed about American philosophy, what he basically says that um, that after Wittgenstein there was what he calls a the disaster of analytical philosophy. Therefore, that for him, Russell was already outside of the realm of what could interest him because he was the enemy. Again, putting it in very simple, simple terms. And I think that Jean Valli is actually very interesting because he does not perceive the break between analytical and continental philosophy. He's sort of beyond that, but it could, that because it did not happen yet. And also because he, during the Second World War, he was exiled in America. And he sort of firsthand experienced that culture he was so interested in, in his very early work. And if we go and read the, the very last things he wrote about the metaphysical experience and, and all that, he has a, a sort of renowned interest also for the analytical tradition. So there's a sort of continued uh, beyondness he wanted to sort of pursue and keep keep alive 
So, so yes, I think there's a lot of work to be done that has been inhibited by, by the sort of parochial nature. I think we'll sneak in one more question before the break. Uh, Alessia, please feel free to unmute yourself if you're able. Yes, I'm here. So thank you, Enrico, for uh, your beautiful speech. I would like to focus on a passage with you quote from uh, Towards the Concrete when uh, Ball uh, criticizes uh, Hegel's viewpoint. Uh, and so you quote that the reality is the limit of dialectic uh, and its origin, its, pur its purpose, its ex explication and disruption. Now, I think we have a, a certain kind of a reciprocal self-creation of entities, both in Hegel and White. Uh, so it's a, a very different viewpoint uh, since uh, we have on the one hand uh, uh, the logical of the self-determination of uh, uh, categories and in white uh, we have events and uh, actual occasion. But uh, I have to recall uh, um, above all that according to Hegel, being is always being with a oneself in an order, uh, in the other. So taking this into account, uh, do you think that we can use full compare White's notion of beyondness uh, that you rightly recalled and the Hegel's category of mediation? This is my suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, it's it's. Uh, I think it's one of the main gripes for for someone studying Val, the the concept of mediation, because a lot of thinkers, even outside the the Hegelian, um, the Hegelian creed, sort of had an idea of of mediation and, and an account of mediation. And I think that Whitehead is one who has a, a very strong ontology of mediation. Um, the problem with Val is that he uh, there is another passage in towards the concrete where he mm -hmm. says that the the yes and here is quoting Nietzsche the yes of reality is the opposite of the no of the dialectic and that uh, the the no of reality is the opposite of the yes of the dialectic which basically mean that the two views are incompatible because his realism does not uh, account for mediation if not in negative terms. So mediation is always the sort of getting further away from reality and getting sort of distance from, from reality itself in a way um, until at the end point, it sort of goes back to simplicity in a sense, which paradoxically enough, could be dialectical and he's very much aware that there's uh sort of um there's there's a, a vicinity between he, him and a sort of dialectical thinking that was very prevalent in the 20th century so much so that he says that his goal is to make the dialectics dialectical which again is very much one of his sort of puns to 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 sort of state his very extreme position but yes i think that beyondness does fall under the category of mediation in, in, in a certain way or at least it's close to the hegelian negation way more than the concept of reality in jacques val is which is openly opposed to the idea of, ne of negation so so yes i think that again it sort of falls back to, to the idea that uh, Val's reading was very much a perversion in, in some very drastic sense. Thank you. 